Good morning. Good Welcome. morning. Happy New Year. Let's talk this morning about choosing the right neighborhood. This time of year as the spring market is fast approaching, a number of folks are thinking about moving up, moving down, moving out of area. And a lot of times when they talk about what they're looking for in their home, they also need to be thinking about what are they looking for in choosing the right neighborhood. I'm Bev Curtis with Bev & Company at House of Brokers Realty. And I'm Cheryl Maupin. And welcome to Breakfast with Bev. This morning we want to talk about some of the key factors that are crucial in making the right purchase decision, not only in the home amenities, but also in the lifestyle of the neighborhood. And let's face it, location is critical from many aspects on the home front. So if you think about your proximity of where your workplace is, where your activities that you like to do, perhaps if you have a family where your kids' activities are, kind of leads over to the school aspect. Also it's about what is in the neighborhood. Is there trails like what you see behind us? Is there a playground area, a ballpark, you know, to walk your dog? Think about all the aspects that entails in a neighborhood and a lifestyle. And another thing is to know how far you are from work and um, where your kids go to school, the places that you visit frequently and then you have to go. You don't want to be living in a great neighborhood that's 50 miles away. That's just not practical and it's going to be stressful on everybody. Well, and it also <clears throat> will lose the thrill of the new home. It could be the perfect home, the perfect floor plan, but if the neighborhood is not in the right location, it can certainly be a downer over the long haul. And we have had people that have contacted us before in the past that said, we love exactly what we have. We wanna duplicate it, but we need it closer to the amenities of what we like to do. So the next feature in choosing a home, a lot of it is about the neighbors and the actual neighborhood itself. And so when I'm in the car with buyers, I will tell me about the neighborhood. My response typically is, you know, it's all about the locals that live in the actual neighborhood. The best way to know about the neighborhood, the good, the bad, the ugly, is talking to the neighbors themselves. Neighbors are a wealth of information uh, from every aspect. And the other key factor with that is, if you really want to know what's going on in the neighborhood, walk the neighborhood. Actually, you know, park your car down the street, take a walk in the morning, you know, check it out as people are coming home after work, maybe walk your dog through the neighborhood. It's a great way to meet people, to ask how they feel about the neighborhood because a lot of home buying is financial, a lot of home buying is feelings and emotion. Mm -hmm. And another thing you can do, you can also Google living in such and such neighborhood, the name of that neighborhood, and it'll pull up blogs, forums, um, a lot of Facebook groups. There's a lot of neighborhoods that have Facebook groups, and you can mm -hmm. just find out a lot by Googling that neighborhood, and um, you can kind of get a feel of what goes on in the neighborhood, what the people are like, um, activities. So that's yeah. a good place to start as well. Facebook neighborhood groups, I have to say, are a key component in finding out what's going on and just kind of what's the overall personality and feel with your neighbors. Kind of next on the list that applies to some but not all is schools. So many of us all know that the school district boundaries are soon to, you know, change again. That's inevitable. I know a lot of people get stressed out about that. But as a community involves and grows over time, really, if we think about that, that's going to be a given. It's going to have to change. But with schools comes, you know, for some people, it doesn't affect them. You know, if you go private schools versus public schools, what age dynamics your kids are, maybe they're not in school yet, maybe they're out of school already and you're becoming an empty nester. But part of picking a neighborhood probably is checking out the schools. Maybe you're already in that district, but actually going online, going and checking out the test scores and visiting with parents that actually attend that school district. Yeah, greatschools.org. You can find ratings on the school and information about the schools, but also once you find some schools that you're interested in, visit that school, you know, set up tours of it, see if you're comfortable with it. Absolutely. And that should come first before you even start looking at neighborhoods because if that's 
a really important thing to you, then there's no sense in falling in love with a house that's not gonna be in the right schools. And part of the trick to this is rating where your priorities fall in line. So you almost need to have a rating on the house and a rating on the neighborhood, and you're trying to get the, bl the best blend and mix that you can. Nothing's gonna be perfect, guys. You're only gonna get so much in the house and so much in the neighborhood, but if you can get the most that you feel comfortable with, then that's probably a very good match for you. So in addition to that, Next kind of on the list that I wanna cover is the actual property <laughs> values themselves. So when you're looking at a neighborhood, you kinda of need to look at your, well, first of all, your income and debt parameters. You know, how much do you want to obligate yourself to as far as financially to a home? And where do you wanna position yourself in that neighborhood in order to get the maximum return? In my opinion, it's not always best to be the king of the hill in your neighborhood. If you're at the height of the pricing point in your neighborhood, it's going to take a lot longer for you to basically grow appreciation, recoup your investment. You're already kind of capping out at the top, and you're the one that's helping everybody else on the bottom and in the middle to be pulled up. If you can, the best positioning, in my opinion, is on the lower end to lower middle because you want the higher end to constantly pull you up in value. Yeah, and then also with property values, take a good look at the neighborhood and make sure it's <clears throat> it's being kept up, you know? If you're seeing like a lot of rundown areas and stuff, it could the neighborhood could be going downhill or vice versa if you're seeing you know, new construction, you're seeing a lot of new things come around that could be helping the property values go up in the neighborhood. So, you know, checking like around the area and the neighborhood itself to see, and I mean, that's what we're here for too, is to help determine, mm -hmm. is this neighborhood gonna keep appreciating or is this neighborhood kind of seen its day? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. The other component too, I think, is from a tax standpoint, you know, in our area, I have to say, even though some folks think that taxes are really high, you know, yes, we pay our fair share in property taxes. However, as compared to other locations around the country, we actually do very well here with our property taxes. Typically, you can expect, depending on the type of property and depending if you're in the city limits or if you're out in the county, that also makes a big difference as far as the tax base goes but you can usually estimate somewhere about 1.1 to 1.4% of your total sales price is a pretty good guesstimate. It's not gonna be precise, but it's gonna give you a good enough guesstimate as far as budgeting in that monthly payment with your principal, your taxes, and your insurance. So that's also something to factor in as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that the if you buy the most expensive, house in the neighborhood again like your taxes are gonna go up um, so you need to make sure that you budget that in exactly and the other thing too that a lot of people don't think about is the actual homeowners association dues. I know some neighborhoods recently have actually gone up um, and a lot of that depends on the neighborhood that you're in how many homeowners especially if you're a newer community how many homeowners are already in that community how many are gonna be joining in that's gonna control those costs? And are there gonna be any improvements or amenities that's gonna be added to that neighborhood community that could make those go up? So a lot of people think, well, gosh, if I get more people in, then maybe mine will go down. Typically, most of the time, they don't go down. Usually, if you can maintain for a three to five year period and not have those dues goes up, that would be considered very good because over time, everything needs maintenance. And so there's maintenance on pools and clubhouses and landscape areas. So, you know, everything has to be refreshed in a period of time. And we did a really great video on homeowners association dues um, right back before the holidays with diversified management. We go really into depth about um, what to look for and picking a neighborhood as far as what your dues are gonna be like if your homeowners association is stable and um, you know in a good financial position so go back it's on our website uh, bevincohomes.com it's on our video gallery and there's a wealth of information on there about homeowners associations and how to make sure you're getting involved in one that is going to be stable very good 
Well, and I think the thing to keep in mind, guys, with the whole big picture and home buying is a lot of it is price. There's no question about that. What fits in your budget, what feels comfortable, whether you're paying cash or whether you're making a monthly payment. But in addition to that, it's the lifestyle. It's the lifestyle of the neighborhood, the community itself, the location it sits in, the school district. Even if you don't have kids in school, schools affect your property value and your desirability as far as resale. It all kind of jives together and gels together in the big picture of your overall investment. So when you're thinking about that, think price, think location, think about where you're positioned in the neighborhood. Does it work location with everything that you have going on in your life? It's the lifestyle, but there's also an emotional piece to this. And a lot of people's like, well, I don't wanna spend this or do this to my home because it's my personal home. I don't wanna get too top heavy. That is true, but it is your home. And more than likely on your personal home, you're probably not going to make the largest appreciation or growth because you're gonna to wanna to do some personal things to that property that maybe you're not gonna get your money back out of, but if you're gonna be there for a five or 10 or 15 year period and you really want a certain amenity, then you know what, do it. It's one of those things where you have to be happy in your home place and you have to you know, enjoy being home and coming home to it. So factor that piece into your formula when you're purchasing because you know, you are going to want to do some things to personalize that property. Just know you have to budget that in the big picture and know that that's part of where you're positioning yourself and where you buy price range in that neighborhood. If you follow those tips, you should be assured to have a very good investment and be very happy in your home. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, we're very excited kicking off 2019. I have to say it's a brisk January morning out here right <laughs> now. My tootsies and fingers are cold, but we so enjoy providing you this information. And if any of our viewers have any topics that they would like for us to share this year, we were more than happy to incorporate that into our agenda. We've got a lot of good topics coming your way, and we're very excited to kick off 2019. Thanks for joining in for Breakfast with Bev. We'll see you next week.